Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Daily Devotion at Church of the Palms for today. I'm glad you're here. And in order to start our devotion, let us calm our hearts and minds by listening to beautiful music played by our very own Jonathan Spivey. So today we have arrived to Mark, the Gospel according to Mark chapter 14, verses 26 through 42. Let us hear God's word to us. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered, but after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a, a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I'm deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit in need is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. 
the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God and our Redeemer. Amen. Surely there is no more powerful passage in the Bible on prayer anywhere than Jesus' prayer at the night of his betrayal, except that some scholars would argue that the gospel according to John chapter 17 is it. I agree with both. Jesus knows he is facing a terrible death and takes one last opportunity to ask God to spare him, praying, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. In this pandemic, all that many people can and able to do are watch and pray. We sometimes act as if prayer is not a good or important thing in our lives. Yet at the most decisive moment of deciding to submit himself to crucifixion or not, even Jesus asked his disciples to watch and pray with him as he went and prayed himself. I can pray by myself and so can you by yourself. But sometimes we need prayer from others. Sometimes we need to pray together. Prayers are an historic part of our Christian life and faith. Even Jesus prayed to be spared. His disciples, Peter, James, and John, were busy falling asleep, although Jesus asked them to keep watch and pray. Falling asleep, although he had asked them to stay awake and watch and pray, was what they did. They keep doing that. According to scholar Henry Hen Harmon Wagen, their eyes are made heavy with sleep, just as the hearts of the Egyptians were hardened before the Passover. The disciples' best intentions could not overcome their human limitation. Three times Jesus turns to them and finds them sleeping. He asks them to stay awake and pray, yet each time they fall asleep. If Jesus, the Son of God, needs prayer in the dark time of his life, we really do need prayers even more. None of us are on an island and we are not created to be alone. We need each other. We need people to love us and to assure us that we are beloved children of God. COVID-19 makes it very difficult for us to show that in person to one another that we are beloved children of God. By God's grace of technology, we can at least continue to call one another or see each other on video calls and Zoom um, calls and to name a few. By God's grace, prayer is something we can do. Perhaps prayer is our superpower during this pandemic. We actually can pray and do pray together over the video calls. Spiritual, spirituality writer Henry Nouwen writes of the importance of calming our claiming our belovedness in God. He wrote in his book, Life of the Beloved, knowing and believing that we are God's beloved children, change our lives and it gives us a joyful being. Each of us are God's beloved children. That is why God sent Jesus to suffer, die, and give us salvation for our sins. Henry Nouwen suggests that there are two ways that we can claim our belovedness from God. One is prayer, the other is 
cultivating presence. In my family, we learn about prayer and praying together from our earlier years. We have, as I mentioned many times before, every day we have family devotion or worship time the end of the day. When my twin little brothers were barely learning to speak, at some point Richard stood up during family worship and he folded his hands, he stood up and he said, O Lalpa, meaning dear God the Father, Amen. And he sat down. So his twin brother Coco stood up right after him, uh, did the same thing, fold up his arms, and he said, O Lalpa, just like Richard said, and sat down. They got it, we got it. We understand prayer is important as those little boys did. Let us enjoy in our privilege to pray and talk to God any time, all day, any part of the day. Prayer is powerful and is an ever-renewing stream. Prayer builds as it goes from us to our neighbor and our neighbor to us, and it makes us one. Friends, Jesus prayed, so let us continue to pray for ourselves, our neighbors, and everybody that we know and we don't even know because that's where we have our life and our power and our strength. Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you that you have taught us through Jesus the importance of prayer. Even as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ prays for himself and for others, we pray that you will watch over all of us and you will give us the patience we need, the peace we need, the comfort and the protecting and the comforting and the strength that we each need. We know that you are there with us at all times in our lives. We give you thanks for teaching us to pray. In Jesus' name, amen.